Well, welcome back, Emily. Thank you so much. Great to see you. It's always great to see you. And um, I'm just going to, you know, I'll tell the audience that we just started talking before this, that then we realized, oh, man, we're supposed to record an interview. So here we are. And this is um, what we call a revisit, where we really like to ask you, um, how are you doing? Um, how was completion of the amazing 2020? And and how can we make 2021 be the year that we actually really remember and instead? So can you get us updated and, and tell us what's new and exciting at, at ExoWorks? So actually, I was really excited by the end of 2020 because we started to see this real change happen around September where companies started to say, okay, we know this is chaos. We're actually going to get together and do something. We're not just going to be in this, oh, I don't know sort of phase anymore. And what happened then was they actually went from thinking about purpose as a sort of add-on. It was generally something that was really reactive and, you know, we're, we're working with a whole lot of the biggest um, polluters in the world. And for many years, it was window dressing that they might do something. That has completely changed. We've been working with these companies and they are completely driven to doing things that are green and to um, actually embracing it. And so even still, you know, a lot of these companies were thinking about it from the position of weakness, like, oh, we had better actually do something. And so it's been really fun actually working with them to come at it from a position of strength and how can we actually really make a difference? I mean, we've been working with one large um, looter and we realized that, you know, they're already making a big investment, but with $6 million more, they can actually take 12% of their entire emissions away. Um, and, also save $300 million a year. So it's just a win-win-win for everyone. And um, I'm, I'm just so excited to see this become part of business as usual. Do you think, um, it may be an obvious question, do you think COVID just dramatically changed their perspective? Undoubtedly, yes. It was a whole reset. You can't actually go back to the 2019 thinking uh, we're seeing investors acting really differently. Uh, they're, they're not willing to accept some of the underlying um, presumptions that were, <laughs> were driving some really silly valuations. Not that we're not seeing some really strange valuations right now, but they're asking different questions. And so I think the, um, the CEOs and the leadership are also asking different questions. But we're also talking with a lot of one-on-one -on -one executive coaches who are telling us that their clients are saying, yeah, I spent all this time thinking that I wanted this huge career and maybe not. So I think that there's just across the entire world, this sort of feeling of, wow, I actually want to have some legacy that's really purposeful and important. And that purpose-driven stuff is either taking people off into a different track or coming back into the business where they say, I'm only going to stick around if I can feel like I'm doing something really important. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that too, where, I mean, the obvious ones have been, well, Bezos is a perfect example. I've seen it where the CEO becomes the chairman because they don't want to do, if you will, the business anymore. They just want to do the vision and all that. Right. So that makes, that totally aligns, you know, with that. What about the, the people that aren't Bezos that are in a VP role that want to do something like that? Like what, how how do, do you see a difference? There's got to be some kind of difference in, in what they can do, what they want to do. So we have been working with a number of companies where their HR team has said, oh, you're going to be working with some people who are really old style thinkers and it's going to be really tough to get them coming along. We have seen completely the opposite of that. Um, people who are really open, um, can't, they're just like sponges in a way that maybe a year ago the same people would not have been. So I think that there's a real um, willingness to learn. There's a willingness to say, hey, I don't know everything. And, you know, really we hired and trained people to be able to say, I know this, I've got it. You know, we had these hugely commodified industries and everything was about, um, having um, knowable questions and knowable answers. 
And everyone is acknowledging that that is just not the world anymore. Everything is uncertainty. We need to be hiring and um, supporting people around how do we navigate things where we don't even know what the question is. And the answers are going to be hugely complex and, and changing all the time. And people are really, you know, starting to be willing to learn about how to do that well. Yeah, that's so interesting because there's two aspects to that. I've, I've had lots of conversations on about the word vulnerability. And I had one leader tell me, man, it's, it's, I've never had an easier time being a leader now that I'm vulnerable to, and I don't need to know everything. And he's having a great time now being a leader and he's, he's being way more effective. The other thing I've found recently, we had, we've had a couple of situations where um, an older person is reporting to a younger person. And that takes a special mindset as well. Have you found these type of combinations? Often, yeah. Um, I think there's a more respect for the open-mindedness of young people and the strange questions that they ask that are often really telling. So um, we're seeing that sort of reverse mentoring as well as just being in a um, different power dynamic. Um, there's an openness. You know, for, for many people, that's still going to be really difficult. Um, but, but I think that there's a real benefit when that can actually happen. What about different industries? Um, are you finding the same conversation in different industries or how does it change? Um, we are, I mean, we're talking to so many different companies in different industries at the moment about whether they want to do a sprint and, um, and really do innovation. And I think we're seeing almost every industry um, thinking, right, we've got to actually really change. However, the, the industries that are coming to us the most at the moment are the resources industries because they're just going through such disruption. Uh, so the, the companies that are saying, right, we've been through all the cutting that we can possibly do. Now we have to work out how to grow and, um, and stem the bleeding even further. And we're not going to be able to do that with the usual old style thinking. We actually have to move to something that's really different. And so we can help them, them with that. Now, I should have done this at the beginning, but for people that haven't seen you before, can you give them a quick definition of what a sprint is? <laughs> Great. So we looked at the fastest growing companies in the world and what was shared in common between them. And we're using 10 week sprints where we actually coach people within the companies to become more like those fastest growing companies in the world. And so, you know, they get incredibly inspired. They go from feeling like trying to change, they just don't know where to start to actually feeling really empowered and knowing exactly how to go about coming up with great new ideas that will be at least tenfold better and then going and properly validating those. I, I've, I've always loved it and uh, I wanna be able to do more, uh, more with you guys. And, uh, and it's always super delightful to, to speak with you. So thanks for the revisit and um, we'll speak again soon. Thank you so much.